Struggling to survive your first horde in Darkness Falls? Cops, spiders, soldiers, mutated, and sheer overwhelming numbers, all on just day seven. Meanwhile, you, armed with just a primitive pipe weapon, protected by feeble cobblestone. Yeesh. Not to worry. Beating the horde has never been easier. Watch as zombies fall to their deaths while you relax. Want a more active play style? Got you covered as well. Welcome, survivors. This is Eerie Knight of the Suda Posse, and today I am sinking my teeth into Darkness Falls for the first time. About a year ago, having never played it, I immediately designed a late game stage horde base with no idea of what to expect, but I have never started from the beginning. If you are new to the mod like me, or you've played before but are still having trouble surviving your first horde, you've come to the right place. At this juncture, I've got an idea or two for how to start. I have a couple designs from Seven Days Vanilla that I'd like to start with and see how they translate to Darkness Falls. First up, my cliffside AFK base that can also work built off from a POI. It is very easy to construct, so I won't go over all the details here. For a more in-depth construction guide, check out the original video, link in the description below. However, one flaw with that base is that it uses plates, which are extreme cop spit bait, as I have demonstrated previously. So I have replaced all the plates with full cube meter blocks. As you can see from this vantage point, the bottom is comprised by a row of five blocks, three blocks, and and one block. Build upwards from there to form the roof and ceiling. Cap it off with a door as that is also spit deterrent. Do not use hatches. They are spit bait and thus won't work. The base is suspended in the air and is supported via the pillar 0.025 meter half side centered blocks. Connected to those are wedge narrow blocks which zombies see as a path and will slide down to the ground most of the time by falling through the gaps of the pillar blocks. Those that do land will eventually fall as zombies are not well coordinated creatures. It is vital to support the wedge narrow blocks from the ground, so I've built these columns using full cube blocks and double poles. Cops don't mind either of these blocks, so they are safe to use. Because we are using full cube blocks on the base itself versus the original, our base is actually larger, which requires more weight to be supported. In order to adequately support the added mass, we need some extra support. Towards that end, we will use the pillar 0.0125 meter shapes as zombies do not see it as a path, but can provide the extra stability we require. Now we can replace our roof and all the spikes we need. With the base constructed, time to test it out against the horde. Wow, it is insanely dark. Darkness falls. I get it. Nice one. Oh, look, here they come. Wow, look at that. They're all dropping down. That's so good. That really trivializes the horde. Dang, I underestimated the darkness here. I I'll need to F5 this and pop out so I can see, or Taco will have a fit during editing. Anyway, as you can see, zombies that do fall onto the pillars will eventually fall down, even the ones beating on the door. Not sure how long the wood door will hold. Bird incoming. Splat. What's this? Cops this early of a horde? Jeez. And they're spitting. That shouldn't be happening. Ah, our, our door has been damaged, leaving a nice small hole there. That doesn't bode well. Okay, we need to make a slight adjustment. We made it through a large chunk of the night, but that hole would lead us to doom. So let's upgrade that door to iron, which should be strong enough to last. And so Taco doesn't go insane, I will add a bunch of torches everywhere so we have more lighting for her in editing. You're welcome, Taco Bear. Let's try that again. I've got a good feeling about this. This is holding up really well now. Time for a patented Taco Mon montage. Hit it! So that was awesome. Dealing with cops, mutated spiders, and all that would be very difficult with the pipe weapons we are armed with. The fall damage is actually quite effective to do all the damage for us. So many loot bags down there. Definitely try to leverage fall damage early on as that can compensate for your early game low damage output. After the horde, all we need to do now is to mop up the survivors and done. That was all too easy. Time to make our lives hell for those who want a more direct action. I'll be starting with a very simple design. For those that have seen our 
our recent video in which zombies must jump up pillar blocks, link in the description below. I'll be using that concept here to start. The idea is very basic. You want to start with a set of stairs a few blocks high. Placing stairs filled corner pieces on both sides of the staircase will help with the zombies climbing back up again. Next, you want to place pillar 0.5 meter blocks up to the same height plus one of the staircase. From the staircase to the pillars, we will position some pillar 0.025 meter middle shapes. These will serve as the path for the zombies to run across. Place another column of vertical blocks, leaving a block or so length gap and place them one block higher than the previous columns. We will fill the gap between with another 0.025 meter middle block. We will repeat this pattern, but the higher we go, we will transition to pillar 0.025 meter half side centered blocks as they are half the length and will form a gap in the path for zombies to fall through. Once we've placed enough columns, I'm going to lay down these plate quarter triangle blocks, which will serve as the straight level path to our fighting position. The next bit is very straightforward. I'm going to construct a three x three tower up to the level of our triangle plates and I'll extend the size of our platform so I can make room for some walls. Based on what I heard of Darkness Falls difficulty, I expect we may get vultures or something worse. So unlike first horde in vanilla, I think walls and a roof will be absolutely necessary. To get into the base, I will build a ladder that starts two blocks above the ground so zombies won't see it as a path. And I'll put a door to provide means of ingress and to protect our backside from unwanted attention. Last but not least, I'll place these cube half thin window blocks down along with the scaffold ladder for us to shoot and melee through. And that's that. This is a very typical and effective early game horde base in the vanilla version of Seven Days to Die. So let's see how that translates to Darkness Falls. So far so good. Definitely more zombies than normal. And what? I see Spit this early? Jeez. Was not expecting that. Oh, that's a nice grouping. Time to throw a Molotov. Oh, it burns. Okay, mistakes were made. Let's try that one again. I think I totally could have survived that without scorching myself. Time to redo. Okay, so far so good. Again. Spit again. But... Where are the cops? Oh dang, Hawaiian guy can spit. The more I know you guess. What, vultures? Hey, where the hell did my roof go? God, there's a flock of them. I severely underestimated how many. Going down, going down. All right, all right. Going to have to handle that one. Well, let's survey the damage while we are at it. Wow, they took out several of the pillars here that fast. Hmm, even if the vultures didn't strike with their beaks of fury, I think the path would have inevitably collapsed. There are just too many of them for the pillars to withstand the onslaught. Well, first thing first, taking care of the birds will be the easy part. There is a tried and true method for that. And that, my friends, is plain old wood spikes. I shall put some bars up on the roof so we can shoot through if need be. But the main defense will be the aforementioned wood spikes. Placing these on top will protect us against the aerial threat as vultures who swoop down to destroy the blocks will instead face plant into the spikes and die. Good riddance. As for our other problem, perhaps too many zombies are falling down off the pillars at the beginning of the path, bunching up and subsequently starting to beat on the blocks. Let's make their path easier by replacing the half pillar blocks with the full length ones. We will do that all the way up to the triangle plate blocks, effectively replacing all the half pillar variants. For some added protection closer to the base, I'll put down a pair of railing blocks over the triangles, which will cause zombies to jump over the railings and fall down. With these adjustments finished, let's reset the horde and see what happens. I definitely feel like we are lasting longer this time. Vultures are no longer a worry, it seems. Holy crap, one of our paths just collapsed. Good thing for redundancy. Holy crap, our one and only tower just collapsed. Curse you, single point of failure. Now that I begin the naked long trek back to the ruins that were once our base, I definitely need to revise my strategy. Apparently the zombies really love to beat on those blocks. I'm going to try to make the path easier for them, and I will lower the path a bit to make the angle better for the crown corner blocks. For those who have not seen my cop spit videos, I will replace our front with the crown corner blocks to protect against puke. I won't be putting up a protective wall in front like in the base from the previous video, so they will still puke, but we should be otherwise safe. Oh, and that is strange. Apparently I can crawl through solid matter. This superpower could come in handy. Okay, crowns are working okay. Shooting line of sight appears to be good. Hitting with melee is a bit tricky due to the width of these blocks. Luckily, I can crawl through solid matter. Superpower. Ouch, I've been hit. Bad idea, it seems. It would appear that this base is suffering from the same problem as the previous iterations. Making the path easier to cross is not solving the core problem. As best as I can tell, zombies that fall immediately start raging, which causes other zombies to join in on the fun, 
rapidly collapsing the path and then ultimately my tower. For those that fall off the triangles, what if we place some log spikes underneath to damage them? This way, over time, we can kill some zombies and thin out the herd. And for the zombie rage, perhaps if I construct a platform underneath the pillar block so they won't fall quite as far, will help alleviate the raging issues. The main problem is that early game, we don't have the defenses to add extra DPS or the weaponry to kill them fast enough. I think we need to revert the crown corners as we need to rely more on melee. Let's replace those blocks with some ramp tips and thin windows. They will block the puke and provide an easy means for me to melee throw. Time for another horde test. Interesting. If anything, the logs are making them even more inclined to beat on the base, probably because they have difficulty getting out of the spikes and thus just beating wildly. I can tell this isn't going to work well and we are just wasting wood on these spikes that aren't really going to help us much. I'm going to remove our existing path and for the testing sake, I'm just going to put in a bunch of cube blocks, make it super easy for them. I want to see what these guys do under the easiest of conditions. That actually seems to be working well, but unfortunately there's no way we could kill them fast enough this early in the game. I think I definitely need to make their pathing easier in some way so I can last the night. I'm going to use wider pillar blocks as the path and have only a pair of pillar columns, less stuff for them to beat on. I'll use these wedge tip folds to try to break their fall down and beneath these I'll put a path with the ladder leading back up to the path for the zombies to follow. Hopefully this will solve the beating issue at the base of the pillars and the base of the, uh, well, base. Eh. A sizable group is still beating on the tower, and I think the anti-rage device is working okay-ish. They did destroy the wedge tips rather quickly. The main thing though is that I'd like to prevent the zombies from collapsing our tower again. Using cobblestone, it won't take long for that to happen, and this design doesn't seem like it will prevent that from occurring. Maybe I have been going about this the wrong way. Simplicity is king, and I may be making this more complicated than it needs to be. I will remove pretty much all the stuff I added, add some additional blocks to our tower support to deter zombies from attacking it and put some log spikes around the tower. Nice, easy, and simple. And also doesn't work. Zombies are still piling on the bottom and beating the hell out of the base. This definitely won't last the entire night. No, maybe let's try to prevent the beating of the tower with some cheese. What if we surround the tower with blocks zombies don't see as a path and use that as a shield against the falling zombies? I'll build it out about two blocks from the tower and create a wall around it such that zombies falling in front won't try to beat on it and instead go back along the path. Interestingly, they are now beating on the front and the back. This probably won't work unless I do something like the previous video I did in which zombies jump up the pillars and fall down on a raised platform. That would probably suffice, but I don't want the early horde base to be too involved. I'd like to have a simple design that can just work. That actually might be the key. Perhaps this is too big. I think the path needs to be shorter so the stairs will be closer to the point where they fall. If they have a shorter distance to run back up the path, they may be less inclined to beat the shit out of the pillars and the base and instead run back up. I'll do some stairs along the side to create an even shorter path and the same set of stairs out front. We'll do the two same set of paths across, although it seems I didn't align this quite right. My OCD is going to kick in right about now. Ugh. Okay, fixed all of that, so here's our final design. It is a simple, shorter path for zombies to travel, thus also creating a shorter distance for us to have to aim at them. As they fall, they'll have a shorter route to get back up topside. I also increased the width of our tower support so it can hopefully withstand more punishment and deter the zombies from beating. Here's hoping anyway. This horde seems to be going well, lasting a lot longer and quite uneventful thus far. I think I can definitely hear them beating below, but I think the thicker base should be able to cope with that. More of them do seem to be coming up the path, which is what I wanted. Based on my testing, I would come to the following conclusions. First, early game is going to be brutal as you don't have enough damage output to kill them fast enough. So they will bunch up and congregate, which is not great for block longevity. As such, we need to compensate for that by moving them along as quickly as possible by making the shorter path. 
while a 3x3 or even a 1x1 base is suitable for vanilla 7 days, it is not here. I would highly recommend a thicker base to deter zombies from beating on it. And before I forget, dealing with vultures is extremely easy. Just put some spikes on top of your roof and they'll dive bomb into your roof and go splat. And there we have it, morning. We ran out of ammo and so your early game base needs the ability to hold up and bide you time till the break of dawn. Inspecting the post war damage, they definitely tore up some of the tower and staircase. Not too bad, so it looks like our plan worked in routing zombies back up the path. And that's that everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment below as to your favorite Darkness Falls horde bases, or if you have an idea you'd like me to test, let me know as well and I can try it out. Thanks for watching everyone. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And a special shout out to all of our patrons whose support is extremely helpful to our channel's continued growth. This is Eerie Knight of the Pseudo Posse signing off. See you all in the next one.